Welcome to the Laboratory of Functional Neurogenomics. Our overarching goal is to build networks of connections of biological processes that are crucial to disease. The first thing that I need to do is get my DNA. Now to simplify the problem, I just want to look at DNA variation. It looks like this is going to be a really complex problem, but what I can do is simply look at a single DNA change and how that affects a single downstream RNA or protein. And what we're really doing is looking at the dose of this DNA change and looking at, with none of that DNA change, there's a little bit of expression. With one copy of that DNA change, there's a mid-range level of expression. And with two copies, you get a lot of expression. And so what we're really mapping is a linear relationship between variation dosage and expression. So we do the same mapping with the Alzheimer's data. We're looking for linear relationships as well in Alzheimer's disease, but we're looking for those linear relationships to be slightly changed. So we can do this over and over and over again. And so at the end of the day, we get these big networks of data where it's DNA controlling downstream expression of RNA and protein what's really important for Alzheimer's disease. Well, you can use other types of math to go into those networks and pull out small subnetworks that you think are really important. And then you look at those subnetworks and you pull out what molecule is really important. So from all of this huge pile of data, you get single things that are called key drivers that are the most crucial for the development of disease. Our inputs include DNA, RNA, protein, and other data sets, which are shown by the different color boxes in the video. Different algorithms are used to build connections between these data sets. These connections are then divided into the most closely related groups of connections. These closely related groups are called modules, and each has a different color in this video. By the end of this phase of our analysis, we have networks of closely related data sets but with distinct groups. In the next step, we connect the modules to known biological processes. After that, we map the information flow between and within the modules. We now have a map of network modules and their biological processes and information flow within the network. Our first analysis looked at single targets. This analysis involved looking at the relationship between individual DNA alleles and downstream expression. Shown here are our cis hits, which are alleles that are correlated with downstream expression that are located very close to the affected target. The top graph are the results from Cronus and the bottom the results from Rush. Additionally, we mapped whether any of our single target hits mapped to the list I found from genome-wide association studies. For the most part, there was no overlap. To examine multi-target effects, we performed an analysis building networks and analyzing them to build a small subset of testable targets. For this step, key driver analysis was performed and the basic principle is shown here. First, causal networks are built, determining which transcripts or peptides are most closely related and in what direction. In these predictions, each target is a node and each relationship is an edge. All edges are given direction as indicated by the arrows. Test sets are then projected onto the networks. Here we show the differentially expressed transcripts as a test set. These are mapped to determine where they fall in the network and what other members of the test set they are connected to. Key drivers are predicted to be the members of the test set that are most connected to other members of the test set. For example, in our case, differentially expressed targets that are the most connected to other differentially expressed targets. Thus, in our case, the pink node is a key driver. After key drivers are predicted, it is important to validate those predictions. We chose two cell lines that overexpress the canonical known pathogenic proteins involved in Alzheimer's disease, extraneuronal A-beta and intraneuronal tau. Our hypothesis is that risk factors will be modifiers of known pathways. Establishing a validation pipeline in this manner allows for both the determination of specificity and effect we need to be sure that the key drivers can act on their own or specific to the known Alzheimer's pathways and not neurodegeneration in general. 
our best target increased levels of both A beta 40, A beta 42, tau, and phosphatau on a background of already 20 fold overexpressed A beta and 5 fold overexpressed tau. We have further elevations at most time points we considered.